Hey, everybody, welcome to today's story. And today's story is Tesla Semi Will Not Fly. And this is part of the I Got Challenge series. Anybody in Patreon can challenge me. And this is how basically a Patreon member details are here. You can challenge me, lay out your case, and I will try and either agree or disagree. But my job here is to give my point of view on the Tesla Semi and some of the things that some people may not understand. And this one is brought to us by Anderson W., who has a lot of contacts in the trucking industry. So let's jump in. This is Anderson W. The following factors need to be considered regarding Tesla Semis. First of all, ROI. Is it a good investment? Tricky part. And there's a lot more later regarding numbers, but just out of the gate, we're just going to tackle a few elements. First of all, the fuel costs alone, the return investment, are probably over 83%. And let me explain how I get to that. And I've done a detailed semi video, by the way. I will add that video here afterwards. But basically, uh, for every 200 miles a traditional diesel semi truck does, they burn about $189.76 of diesel. And assuming uh, if it's a Tesla Semi, it'll burn 400 kilowatts of energy at 7 kilowatts an hour. That's $28 to do 200 miles. And that is an 83% saving. So typically, annually, a truck does about 150,000 miles. That'll cost about $142,500 in diesel. And on top of that, there's a lot of other expenses. But compared to the electric cost... That 142500 in diesel equates to about $24,000 in electricity. And I realize that electric rates vary all across the country and the world, but that's what we're taking for now, that $0.07 cents average. Now, in addition, there's also a ton of other savings on maintenance, oil changes, emission control, brakes, etc. And we'll talk about those a little bit later as well. So that's that. In addition, there's are elements that people don't quite understand regarding the semi-truck. First of all, they have insane aerodynamics. The drag coefficient of a Tesla semi is 0.36, and a diesel truck is about 0.65 to 0.7, and a Bugatti Chiron is 0.38. Now, this is aerodynamics for the height and size. Obviously, a truck is bigger. It has more drag, but for the space, it is actually more drag efficient than a Bugatti, which is insane, but it's true as well. In addition, the competition, again, class eight electric semi trucks in North America that exist. There's some fake ones like Nikola. Then there is Volvo, Leon, Daimler, Kenworth, Peterbilt, BYD. But you can see the estimated battery size is, of course, bigger in the Tesla at about 914 kilowatt hours versus some of the others that are smaller. The range is also the highest, and the efficiency is miles per kilowatt hour, estimated to be about 1.7 with Tesla, and about 2.5 on average, up to 3.3 with some of the competition. Also, the time to charge is a lot less with Tesla, so we'll talk about that later as well. But these are key stats you need to understand. And people always question Tesla, but they make what is appear to be the Impossible, possible. In addition, this is one of the key secrets of the Tesla Semi. Now, they use three motors. Technically, they could get away with one to be equivalent to a diesel truck. But the thing is, what they've done is they broke one of the motors out, which is for cruising on the highway to maintain speed. And the other two motors are for acceleration. Now, the secret of this is these plaid motors have tremendous power. But why three? It's a lot cheaper just to put in one. But the reason they put in three is because we generated braking. So anytime this thing is going down a hill, they got three motors to charge the engine, the motors back, the batteries back. In addition, a little bit of plaid magic. This is the torque magic. Uh, the plaid motor can move a two ton truck to more than 60 miles an hour in less than two seconds. And for a 20 ton truck, uh, they can move it not to 60 in 20 seconds. So it's not as fast, but it's a lot more weight to consider. And that is the magic of the crazy power curve that is highly efficient and highly responsive compared to other trucks out there. Now, there have been a lot of naysayers as well. Sorry to dwell on this, but you know, Bill Gates said the Tesla Semi 
<laughs> and electric airplanes will probably never work. Aha, uh -huh. well, he's been proven wrong. And Daimler, the Daimler truck CEO, said they will learn the hard way. It's not possible. But again, everybody always doubts Elon Musk. So let's talk about time to charge. This is a key question from Anderson W. Well, Tesla claims to be able to charge a semi to 70% in 30 minutes. The average trucker does not fill the tank to 70% on a pit stop. Interesting. And the average trucker does not fill diesel from an empty tank either. And fill up times average 10 minutes at most. And this is a very small point of disagreement, but one can assume also the battery driven semi will not charge from a completely drained state nor fill to a completely charged state. Very important. So first of all, there's a couple of things to consider uh, when you are driving long distance. I have spent a lot of time driving long distance. And the charge, as you correctly say, for every 300 miles in a traditional truck, that will take you six hours. And a human needs to stop for a potty break and a coffee probably every six hours. So 30 minutes will be welcome. So I'm not too broken over the extra 20 minutes it would take. In addition, when you are charging an electric vehicle, you don't need to sit and watch it like you need to pump diesel into a truck. You can plug it in, walk away, have a coffee, go to the bathroom, eat some lunch, dinner, breakfast, whatever, and come back. Also, the HOS regulations, HOS means hour of service from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, I think it is. They require a 30 minute break after eight hours of driving. And a truck can only be on duty for 14 hours and only drive 11 hours of the 14. So it's going to be pretty mandatory to take these breaks. And when you get really good at driving long distance, you pick your spots. You know how long it is before you need another coffee, before you need to pee, and you can time everything religiously. And I believe truck drivers are masters of that already, and they will do that. In addition, Drivers need to take a 34-hour off-duty break, known as a restart every 168 hours or seven days to ensure they have adequate rest. So this is not a problem, the extra 20 minutes to charge. So you're right, not a big deal. Cost to charge. The mega charging ability tells Tesla comes at a large upfront cost of around 60000 for each station. There will be several stations needed for each trucking company to adequately achieve the smooth running schedule. And this is additive cost that must be included in the overall ROI calculation. Very important point. Let's dig into what Tesla have done. And this is a piece that many people actually don't realize is actually a huge moat for Tesla. Imagine building, I think it's 50,000 gas stations in the US. Uh, and I, this is, I think this says 40,000. This is a map of the 40,000 Tesla superchargers. And you're right, four mega chargers will cost $260,000 to build. But these guys, are expert already at picking optimal locations, routes, near convenient amenities like coffee shops, um, supermarkets, that type of stuff that people need uh, when they do stop. Now, in addition, nobody, nobody comes close to setting up this infrastructure. And every single supercharger built by Tesla is made to have its own PL and to be is to be able to be self-sustaining. They don't need any funding. They become profitable by virtue of how they operate. And this was a piece of data from a Texas program that granted government grants to install fast EV chargers. And in this government grant, uh, the interesting amounts of the grants, what they said they would cover and pay for 70% of the cost of the chargers to a maximum of $150,000 per charger. And Tesla applications came in as little as 30,000 per charger. So basically the competition is spends five times more money to set up a charger than Tesla does because they've, you know, they've perfected the whole process. Therefore, I have no problem in believing that they will set up an infrastructure for trucks all around the country at strategic spots at a very low cost that will pay for themselves and it will not be a cost for the trucks themselves. Next is battery. Each Tesla semi requires 9 to 10 battery equivalents on a Model SX, and this could prove to be a limiting factor in the production and rollout. Well, if you caught the news lately, they're opening up a huge semi plant in Nevada on the near the Western United States. And that will also be beside a huge gigafactory that makes batteries. And the CFO said batteries are no longer a limiting factor. And the 4680 battery cell offers high energy density, longer range, etc. And this will be what they will use. So I don't believe that's a problem. Next, fuel and maintenance. Getting back to fuel again. Most trucking companies purchase diesel fuel in bulk at a greatly discounted rate. 
distance driven at, at miles per gallon of 6.2 on average will give you the diesel costs. I calculated them a few slides ago, including the additive cost of charging stations with tier four electricity rates in California. The savings might not equal as large as predicted. And brake costs depend on the type of load carried en route. Uh, city route brakes will be changed every 80 to 100,000 miles and long distance routes will change every 150 to 200,000 miles. Again, it depends on the truck the type of driving. If they're driving over mountain passes, they burn through brakes real fast. But let's just talk about some of the elements. One is electricity rates in California. We all know Pacific Gas and Electric has their own set of problems. I'm not going to get <laughs> political here. But the Tesla semi truck is designed to have much longer brake life than traditional semi trucks. We don't know the exact numbers yet, but according to Tesla, the semi's regenerative braking system can recover up to 98% of energy that is lost during normal braking, which means brake pads and rotors on the semi will last much longer than traditional diesel trucks. In fact, they estimate 10 times longer and the brakes on a semi will last about a million miles before they need to be changed. And some of the numbers I've seen, truck brakes need to be changed every 20 to 50,000 miles, depending on the type of driving, the type of truck, the type of style, etc. And also it's very difficult to estimate other cost savings beyond brake life, but there will be no need to handle all of the additional stuff like uh, frequent oil changes, transmission fluid, exhaust system maintenance, all that type of stuff will go away. And the total cost of ownership, which is what Tesla obsesses on, will be a fraction of a traditional truck. Next, reliability and safety, very important. The unknown factors are maintenance. There are numerous mechanics available to work on diesel engines. And the same cannot be said for electric vehicles. How much will it cost for the end user. Well, you're looking at somebody here who has an electric vehicle for over four years, zero maintenance, zero in four years. It is mind blowing. Nothing has gone wrong with the Model X that I have. But in general, electric vehicles have fewer moving parts than combustion engine ICE vehicles, which can make them less prone to breakdowns and mechanical issues. And Tesla vehicles have been consistently well reviewed for their build quality reliability by both owners and independent reviewers. That's why there's also companies like Hertz that are building out fleets of Teslas because they save 60% on maintenance over traditional ICE vehicles. Now let's talk about cost. A Tesla Semi will cost $450,000 each. There are government grants up to $110,000 each, but they are associated with the diesel truck exchange decommissioned at a value of 35 to 45,000. There are also state incentives up to 80,000 each new truck. The recipient will be 1099 for this taxable as income. And the total net gain per vehicle is 110,000 after loss and taxes. Net total cost 340,000. So I don't know where you got the $450,000 number, but the cost of the semi is estimated to be between 150 and 180,000 for the 500 mile version. That's 150,000 for the 300 mile version. Of course, prices could be subject to change. But again, it can vary significantly, but not up to those levels that you mentioned. And the other thing is regarding incentives, it's very difficult to estimate what they are. But uh, in the wry smile on Elon Musk's face in the earnings call the other day, they're going to be good. So huge incentives for EV trucks uh, from the government as well. So the total cost of ownership, but the, the drastic savings of diesel, maybe $120,000 a year with added incentives, it could technically pay for the truck in one to two years, but we'll see. Um, next is ESG. While particulate matter will be decreased by the truck itself, the battery will have to ultimately be charged using a large percentage by fossil fuel, not being political, but ESG seems like a way for the government to pick winners and losers. Yeah, well, we know the way the government operates. I'm not going to go down that path either. But let's look at um, California, for example. This is the California in-state generation. It's about 34.8% renewable. And yes, it's not perfect, but it's getting up there and it's getting better. Other states like Iowa, Kansas, Oklahoma, South Dakota, all have 35% plus from wind. And other states like Vermont, New York, Hawaii have a significant portion from hydroelectric. So... It's not perfect. So let's say we're talking 65% is fossil fuel generated. That is, uh, you know, 
unfortunate, but where these energies are generated are far away from urban areas where there are people that can take in particulate matter. And regarding particulates here, fine particles, uh, as you can see, mixture of different uh, compounds. But the key problem is it's not just the gases, but the dust and the toxic dust. The World Health Organization, I don't know if we can trust them, but they believe these particulates kill 4.2 million people per year. And diesel trucks in the United States emit 70% of particulates. And that is a problem, not even getting into nitrogen oxides. So getting them off the road, getting them away from urban areas like schools, etc., people walking is a big deal. And I think in the year 2030, 2035, cities will ban big trucks from entering them that are diesel in nature, maybe even banned altogether if California continues on this path. Next is competition. The cost of production and pricing of trucks will equal a lower margin over time from a 20 to 50 percent margin is very unlikely over an eight year period. States like, states like California are mandating all electric by 2030. Is this possible? So I think that's kind of a two part question competition yes they will come but they will not be as good they don't have the technology they don't have the plaid motors they don't have the charging infrastructure they don't have the technology all the other stuff uh, that they've done especially the regenerative uh, batteries are key but i do believe states like california will push hard towards these evs and regarding margins and tesla as we know from electric vehicles nobody beats them in margins nobody beats them in manufacturing prowess Nobody beats them in batteries. Nobody beats them in technology. For example, FSD, not even close. Safety, crash tests, nothing comes close. For example, some numbers here. The Tesla Semi gets a 1.7 kilowatt hour per mile of electricity. And the competition are all 2.4 to 2.8. So again, they will come. They will get better, but they won't be as good. And I believe Tesla will keep their lead for the next seven to eight years at least. Next, self-driving will become the norm, but not in this decade. Testing, government regulation, public approval will play key roles in the slowing of the process. So I just updated my car last night with the latest FSD software. It is now navigating on non-public roads, which is stunning. I've never seen it do that before. And uh, again, when you think about truck driving, you got to think in terms of not just doing everything, taking you from A to Z without any intervention. There will, of course, be a human in there, but there's a couple of things uh, I do want to mention. One is freeway driving is nailed. And I drive, you know, 250 miles at least twice a month in FSD, and I wouldn't leave home without it. City driving, not, but trucks don't really belong in cities anyway. Um, the key is assisted. When a driver is there for safety reasons, once they're on the freeway, engage FSD, it'll save a lot. And that could also do a couple of things. One, it could enable less qualified, less experienced truck drivers to take over these things. You could take somebody with a couple of hours of classes and because they have FSD, they can uh, work you know, without having 20, 30 years of experience. I know that might scare some traditional truck drivers, but I believe that's possible. Also, other truck alternatives could be running five trucks in tandem with one driver in the front truck and having the others be fully FSD'd just following the leader. That could also be possible. I know it's one thing that I would consider doing. So FSD definitely for the money is a huge safety feature. It also saves a lot of stress on drivers as well as they go. Next is niche market. The EV Semi will have a very niche market for several reasons. The center driving seating will have a learning curve and drivers use mirrors in a very specific way with this new set of skills. And many yards like truck yards require the use of a CB radio for communication. And was this included in the test drive? Probably not. And there are questions about the efficiency of team driving with EV Semis. Frequent stops may deter from long haul situations. My guess is that EV Semi will have a great market share in the short to mid range deliveries. I agree, but I also think long range would probably be a lot more comfortable for the driver. But let's dig into some of these things. One is the center seat. Very controversial. From what I've read and heard, people get used to it within a couple of hours. And once they're used to it, they'll never go back. they say, why was I on one side of the car for a long time? Um, I personally have driven left-hand drive and right-hand drive vehicles all my life. So for me, it's natural. And in the middle, I'm sure it'd be natural too. Also, Tesla have developed a comprehensive training program for semi-drivers, which includes both classroom and hands-on training to become familiar with the vehicle and its controls. 
And in addition, the most important thing is all of the enhanced and advanced driver assistance systems, automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, forward collision warning, Again, all of these things is what Tesla do so, so well. And this truck will have so many advanced features. Again, once anybody steps into it, they will feel uncomfortable in any other truck for long distance. Uh, back to CB radios for a second. For those who may not know who are too young on the channel, CB radios were traditionally used by truck drivers to communicate with other truck drivers while on the road. And it was a two-way type of radio to communicate with others over a shared frequency without the need for a license. Now, they were very popular in the 70s and 80s, I think, when trucking companies and independent truckers used them to share information about traffic, road conditions, and other hazards. I also believe they used them to chat because they were bored. They, didn't, they couldn't watch YouTube when they're driving. They couldn't listen to Pandora or whatever people do and trucks. And that's why CBs are very, very popular. But now, no, I spoke to two truck drivers and they both use iPhones. They have not used a CB in over a decade plus. So with that, um, and I'm sure the yard would be the same. And when it comes to all the other stuff, like using Waze for traffic navigation, um, whether it'll all be like a smartphone, I believe. So with that, don't bet against somebody like Elon Musk. He makes two rockets land simultaneously on their butts after dropping a big payload in the, up in space. So again, I think they've thought about this for six, seven years. They spent a long time developing it. And uh, all of your points are very valid, but they're easily overcome as well. So per my last video as well, I do believe the conclusion of this whole story is the Tesla semi should add between $500 and $600 to the share price of Tesla by the year 2030. And that's all in this video up here too as well. So thank you so much, Anderson W. I love being challenged. It keeps me sharp. Make sure I always question my theses, etc. And I think Tesla semi will be a big hit, especially with the news of building another gigafactory to make these things. And also, you mentioned uh, short and medium haul routes. They're working on a sprinter van type concept, I think, as well, that's going to come out. So think semi and then think lots of little smaller vehicles for shorter term deliveries. So thanks so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the KPM. And I'll see you all tomorrow.